Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be doing a top 5 games of 2015. Now this list is my top 5 games of 2015. Um, I'll start off with a few honourable mentions and then I'll break it down to the top 5. So to begin with, honourable mention. So the first game that I will be mentioning is Football Manager 2015. It's a game which I recently purchased, uh, it was released in November had a beta period of about a week or so and then it went on to the full release and i'm really enjoying it I've, i'm doing a let's play on my uh, second channel which is my football manager channel dragonheart fm with Wrexham taking them from the conference premier to, to the premier league that is the aim of the series anyway and i'm really enjoying it they've added a few uh, little um tweaks and stuff which i really like so for example you can now create a manager in the dugout so you can have your own little avatar walking around the touchline um, there's lots of cool new features like the draft mode, which is something that they've been crying out for for a long, long time. And it's just, you know, it, it's the same Football Manager game essentially, but I feel like the little tweaks to the, the match engine uh, and, and the features that I've mentioned have been, have been crying out for for a long time basically. And it's nice to finally see those features added to the game. So it doesn't quite make it to my top five, but definitely is worth an honourable mention. And the second game that I will be giving an honourable mention to is Ark Survival Evolved. Now it's an early access game. And as far as early access games goes, one of the best I've played. Fully fleshed out. Um, it was released back in, I think it was April, April, March, April. And to be honest, it's it's really good. It, you can you create your character, you spawn in, you have nothing but um, uh, just just a, a torch and your your underwear effectively, and you have to try and survive. But it's not like a zombie game. You have you have to survive from dinosaurs. And the great thing about this game is you you can sort of craft your own hat, lots of materials and stuff, lots of people you can mix with and try and kill or you know get your friends involved and, and form your own clan etc just like any other uh, survival game but what i liked about this game was that um you can tame dinosaurs so you can ride around on a t-rex if you're able to do that and it, when you get to the higher tiers you can build like sniper rifles you can build like metal bases and stuff it's really really good and and it's definitely worth being in it for the long haul to try and get the most out of the game um it did have a bit of a bad release though uh, initially, a lot of people were complaining that they were getting like uh, 10 frames per second, 15 frames per second. But to be fair to the development team, they have worked non-stop. And literally every week I, when I put, go onto Steam, there's, an, there's some sort of update on Ark Survival Evolved. And it's been like that throughout the year. So definitely worth an honorable mention. It's been a fantastic game to play. Okay, guys. So number five on the list is Telltale Games Game of Thrones. I'm a massive Game of Thrones fan, so it might be a bit of a shock that this game isn't higher up on the list. I have taken a few liberties with putting this one uh, on the list, though, because it is. it was actually released, the first episode was actually released in 2014. It was at the end of 2014, though it's still, it's still within a year or so, so I felt like it was recent enough. And plus, most of the other episodes um, have all come throughout 2015, so I felt like it was fair enough to, to put it on this list. And it is phenomenal. The characters... Um, this, obviously, you know, I'm a bit biased. The setting's a fantastic setting to, to play in. Um, but the characters are fully developed, fully fleshed out, really good. People like, even like Ethan, for example, who you play with in the first episode. And he, you know, you, the game is built around you trying to trying to survive. You know, you're under threat from the, the, the throne, from the Boltons and from the White Hills. And you, you're playing as Ethan trying to kind of um, get him to survive and not make mistakes. And all of a sudden then, boom, he gets bumped off at the end of the first episode. And it's just so Game of Thrones-like. You, you have to be a fan of Game of Thrones to really enjoy this Telltale game. I feel like the other games, like The Walking Dead... Uh, the Wolf Among Us, you, you can you can not know much about those franchises and it wouldn't make much difference. But with Game of Thrones, obviously all the different families and, and the political game and stuff, you need to know you need to know the basic stuff at least. And I feel like it, for people who are not a fan of Game of Thrones, they're going to probably feel a bit left out. But, uh, you know, the game was phenomenal to play. I played all six episodes. I streamed a few of them as well and they were absolutely tre uh, tremendous to, to play. And it's definitely worth number five on my list. Now we move on to number four. Okay, so number four on my list is H1Z1. This game was released back in January. And again, it's an early access game, but I think it's probably the best early access game I've played all year. It is absolutely phenomenal. You spawn in, and you know the game. The big comparison is going to be with Daisy, but I feel like this game plays much better than Daisy graphically. It's it's more or less the same. Daisy may just edge it, but Daisy's been out a lot longer and had a lot more work done to it, or at least you would think. But H1Z1, you know, it, it's got so much it, it offers. Like it's so simple. The control scheme, for example, I find playing the two very different. I, I can sit down and play H1Z1 for four or five hours, and I wouldn't feel bored. Whereas with Daisy, 
I, I sit down, I play it for an hour, and I'll feel bored because the map is so big with Daisy that it, it's difficult to um, just kind of you know you can play for an hour and not see anybody. With H1Z1, you can play for sort of twenty minutes and then you, you'll come across somebody. So um, I feel like even though the map's a bit smaller, if anything, it's probably too small. It needs to be expanded slightly. They're they're, not, they're patching the game, they're improving things. The development team are actually. Uh, developing the game and working on it on a monthly basis or so so that's nice to see as well um, and the, the cream of the crop for this game is battle royale playing battle royale especially team battle royale is absolutely phenomenal the best i ever got was third and i was so proud to get third out of 200 people uh, so the game is great to play with friends um, it's, it's great to play on your own in survival mode trying to survive from zombies one or two zombies is easy to survive against but when it's a horde of them like 20 which i've come across on a couple of occasions it's like holy shit i need to get out of here um, and yeah, you know, it's got the, the the core mechanics of most survival games, but I feel like it offers just that bit more, which which you want. And I definitely think it's worth your money to buy this game, and it's definitely deserved number four on my list. Okay, so number three, and this one might come as a bit of a shock, especially with my thoughts and feelings of Assassin's Creed Unity last year. But Assassin's Creed Syndicate gets number three on my list this year, and fair play, Ubisoft, fair play, you have come back well with this franchise. I feel like Unity um, was terrible. It, it was unplayable. The story was lackluster. The characters were la lackluster. And I just didn't feel a part of it at all. This game had a different feeling. The story was pretty good. wasn't the best by any means as, as far as Assassin's Creed games go. If it was, it would have been higher on this, this, list, uh, this particular list. But, you know, as far as it goes, the story... It was good, it was satisfying. The characters, the sibling rivalry between Jacob and Evie Fry was fantastic as well. The voice acting and the chemistry was great between the two of them as well. And the modern day stuff, you know, even though it didn't really... Well, to be honest, the modern day stuff, it didn't really do much in the modern day as, far as compared to the other games. Um, which I don't mind, to be honest. Um, it was interesting, though. Not as interesting as um, the whole Desmond thing, but I don't think any of them ever have been. But it was much better than Unity. And all you can really ask for in a franchise is, is to better your previous game. And they've done that. They've come back strong. A lot of people are looking at this game, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate, in a much more favourable way now. And I hope now that the next game they release, they'll take more ideas on board. And they'll try and perhaps reduce some of the repetitive gameplay just a little bit. Because that bit still was um, a feature in some in some scenarios. But, yeah, they've come back strong. I enjoyed it. And it is number three on my list. Now we move on to the top two. Okay, guys, so this was difficult to kind of place between one or the other. I didn't know which one to go for initially, but then when I sat down and thought about it, I had to pick Fallout 4 at number two. This game's fantastic. It is up there to contend with Game of the Year, in my opinion. The hours I put in is ridiculous. The story, probably the weakest part of the game is the story, um, especially in the early part of the game until you get to about the halfway mark. But once you get to the halfway mark, it really picks up. Um, the, the side missions are really satisfying. The characters are really, really fleshed out. The backstory to the companions is amazing. The the world, you can lose yourself in this world. The amount of weapons, the amount of items you can collect, the amount of stuff you can scavenge. It has got literally everything you could hope for in a role-playing game. It's got voice acting now for the main characters, which some people are spit on. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people do. I'm a fan of it. I think it's pretty good. Um, even Codsworth, you know, he, if you, he can actually like call you Mr. White or something if you call yourself Mr. White, which is re a really nice touch as well. And Fallout 4 for me, I mean, it, if people pick as Game of the Year, fair enough, I think it's deserving of it. But um, unfortunately for for, oh, for this particular list, it doesn't quite get number one on my list. And that's because it's one game I enjoyed a little bit more. And now I will reveal it because number one is The Witcher 3. It had to be The Witcher 3. This game <laughs> is absolutely phenomenal. It is the best game I've played all year. The story was so good and I'm more of a narrative person than a gameplay person I enjoy a good story and that's what's edged it for me really Geralt of Rivia is one of the most iconic gaming characters in my opinion and he certainly was this year the voice acting was great the story was fantastic uh you know his his, his fight to try and get Siri back and then fight the the wild hunt was phenomenal the, the missions were really good the mission where you play um it's the Baron when when you you learn of what's happened and you investigate and it turns out that he's this broken individual. The Baron, uh, he for those who do not don't know, he's in Velen, I think, and you come across him and he comes across this tough Baron. Uh, don't give me this shit, Geralt. Blah de, blah de, blah. And then you, the more you investigate, and the more you you invest in this story, 
the more you get out of it and you investigate you know what the baron is and you, you locate his wife and his daughter or you try to and you realize he's a broken man the war has torn him down the stuff that's gone on with his wife and beforehand it's just it's just terrible and then you you eventually learn who she is and it's just like whoa you know this is quite deep and i read somewhere i think it's pc gamer magazine they actually said that that mission um was up for a mission of the year award in video games and it would definitely deserve to win it if, if that is the case because I was gripped with that mission. It was fantastic. And I obviously I'm just, I'm just um, honing in on one particular mission here. There's lots more to it than just that. There's the gameplay. The gameplay, a lot of people don't like the gameplay. They think it's a bit too hack and slash. But the bosses are so difficult to break down in this game. You really have to do your research. You really have to w work out like which uh, creatures are weak against what. Is it a silver sword? Is it a metal sword? Do you need some uh, special uh, oil on your sword, for example? Are they weak to Igni? You know, it's just stuff like that. And you do your research and then you work out what's weak against what. You really feel like a hunter. You you do really feel like a witcher in this game. And yeah, I couldn't put it down. And obviously the DLC came out, the Hearts of uh, Stone DLC. And they are going to be bringing out another one, I think, in January or February as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, for me, number one is Witcher the Witcher 3. So that is my top five games of 2015. If you agree or disagree with me, let me know in the comments section below. And let me know in the comments section below what is your top five games of 2015. I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.